So one of the things I hear the most from my Windows clients is that over time, their computers just seem to get slower and slower and slower. Now, there's a bunch of different reasons that that can happen, but at the end of the day, it comes down to either software or hardware. Now, one of the things that I do on this channel is to help you find solutions to these everyday problems. So this is a client machine that I got to work on, and that was their biggest complaint, is that it got slow, but it didn't happen over time. It seemed like it happened suddenly. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how if you have a situation like this where your computer has suddenly gotten slower, how to troubleshoot these problems, what you can do to fix them to get back up and running. Now, a lot of times when you see a machine suddenly get slower for no reason, part of the reason is because your disk, your hard drive inside is running at full capacity. And in this case, I went to Task Manager and sure enough, it's sitting at 100% disk usage. So that right off the bat tells me that there is something running that is preventing everything else on the computer from working properly because it won't stop hammering that hard drive. So what we gotta do is we gotta figure out what's causing it and stop it. Now, if you remember what I just said a little while ago about Windows problems either being software or hardware. So what you don't wanna do is spend all day chasing a software problem when it turns out it's a hardware problem and vice versa. So the very first thing I always like to do is just do a check on the physical hard drive to make sure that everything's physically okay before we start trying to figure out what happened in Windows that's causing this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a simple check disk. And this is just going to make sure that the Windows file structure is intact and there's nothing wrong. You want to click in your search bar and type CMD. And you can either right click on that and choose run as administrator or click run as administrator off to the right. Now, if your system is running super slow or at 100%, it may take a couple minutes for this to finally pop up. That's okay. Just be patient. It eventually will come up. So once this DOS box comes up, you're going to simply type in CHK DSK space forward slash F and then hit enter. Go ahead and let that run. It may go ahead and scan right now or it may require you to restart and then the check disk will run at the next reboot. Either way is fine. There's no intervention involved. Windows is going to do everything, but this will be a good way to check and make sure that the Windows file structure is intact. So we ran the check disk and the machine restarted and we really don't see much difference. The machine is still sluggish, but I'm going to go ahead and check the task manager again to look at the disk usage and starts off really low and then quickly shoots up to 100% again. So we haven't gotten any further. The next thing I wanna do is I want to run a thorough check disk on the actual drive to see if there's any hardware damage on the drive. Now the way you do this is same as before. Now we're gonna run a similar command this time. We're gonna still do the CHK DSK, which is the check disk, but instead of the slash F, we're gonna use a slash R. And same as before, if the computer needs to restart, which it probably will, go ahead and allow it to do that. This check disk is going to take quite a while, so if you have something else to do for 30, 40, 60 minutes, go ahead and do that. Just let Windows do its thing, and then let's take a look at it when the machine comes back up. So we've run both check disks with the slash F to check the file system and the slash R to check the integrity of the drive. Everything seems to be okay, but we're still getting 100% on the disk usage. So the next thing I want to do is run what's called a system file checker. And this is a utility that's built into Windows and basically what it does is it checks the Windows file system to make sure that all the files are the correct size, the correct versions, all of that. That can sometimes get screwed up when maybe there's a bad Windows update or you install a program and it overwrites a system file. And that can cause Windows problems and can potentially cause your computer to slow down or high disk usage. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what you're going to do as before is you're going to go to your command prompt and you're going to type in CMD and then run as administrator. Now when the box pops up, this time you're going to type SFC space forward slash scan now, all one word slash S-C-A-N-N-O-W. Go ahead and hit enter. The SFC is gonna go ahead and check the Windows file system to see if there's any corruption, and then we'll see what happens after that. Okay, as you can see, the system file checker did find corrupt files and repaired them, but unfortunately, our disk usage is still sitting at 100%. So at this point, I'm thinking it may be malware or a virus on the machine, so that's the direction that we're gonna go next. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this program called rkill. 
and you can easily get it. It's totally free. Just go to your favorite web browser and type in download or kill. And then you're going to look for the website that points to Bleeping Computer. That's a site that all techs know and is perfectly safe. Now, when you run this program, what's going to happen is any process that's running in Windows that doesn't need to be running is going to be shut down immediately. And even though Arkill doesn't clean anything, what it will do is if it stops something that's not supposed to be running, it will give you a good idea that there's your problem because if suddenly your 100% disk usage goes away after eliminating one of these Windows processes, then you know it's something running in Windows and you can eliminate everything else. Now, a lot of times what will happen is, is it will freeze or just get stuck. Uh, that's okay. It's not a perfect program, but occasionally it does find stuff that actually doesn't need to be running and will kill it. And again, that's just to give you an idea of where the problem is, not to eliminate it. If you restarted your computer, whatever's running is going to come right back. But this will tell you if there is an active process. So it's a great utility to try to at least start to get an idea of where the problem is. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Your odds of winning a lottery jackpot? About 1 in 290 million. But some people still play their favorite numbers every week expecting to win. Your odds of your house burning to the ground? 1 in 3,000. But you pay every year for homeowner's insurance, just in case. Your odds of having your identity stolen or being a victim of online crime? 1 in 4. Let me say that again so it sinks in. 1 in 4. And even though you spend all this money every year protecting everything else in the world, what are you doing to protect yourself against becoming a victim of online crime or identity theft? Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about it until it's way too late. And that's where Aura comes in. And myself being a victim of identity theft in the past, trust me, that's a battle you do not want to fight. Data brokers sell your information to spammers and scammers. Your full name, your address, your phone number, health records, your relatives, it's all out there for the picking. We hear all the time about companies getting hacked and data breaches and all of that. AT&T just recently released that 73 million customer records were released on the dark web. And they recommend using strong passwords, monitor your account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from the credit bureaus. But who has time to do all that? I know I don't, but Aura does. Their system shows me which data brokers are trying to sell my data and then automatically submits opt-out requests for me. They also protect me against hackers who are trying to get into my social media bank accounts, and other personal information. Aura does all of this with just one app. To find out more, sign up for a two-week free trial at Aura.com slash AskYourComputerGuy and find out for yourself what's really out there with your name on it. So we ran our kill for probably 15, 20 minutes, and it looked like it really didn't stop anything, like there weren't any active processes or anything super obvious. After about 15 or 20 minutes, I just went ahead and killed it and decided that we have to go and take it to the next step. So what we're going to do next is download a program called Rogue Killer from Bleeping Computer. And this is a program that I've used for years and it's pretty amazing at finding and removing bad stuff. So once again, just open your web browser and this time type download Rogue Killer, which is all one word, followed by Bleeping Computer. Or you can just download Rogue Killer and when you see the Bleeping Computer link, that's the one you click on. And just like any other program, just go ahead and download it and start the process by running it after the download is completed. And again, if your computer's slow, it may take a couple minutes for the program to finally run and open. That's fine. You don't have to disable your antivirus or anything else. Just start the program and accept the defaults. Pretty much at all stages of the process, I like to keep an eye on that disk usage because when that finally does drop, I want to know what happened and when it happened. So at that point, I can start to say the computer's fixed. So I just kind of keep that up and running in the background, regardless of what method I'm using to fix the computer. Now, when you open Rogue Killer, just go ahead and choose Activate Trial, or not now, that you just want to basically use it for single usage. When you click on the scan, just go ahead and select Full Scan, and then it's going to start doing everything it needs to do and scan your system and possibly remove whatever is running. And again, I would recommend keeping an eye on that 100% disk usage because you kind of want to know when the problem's been fixed. So no huge surprise, the scan's complete. I ran through the results, not a whole lot of stuff in there. I'm gonna go after whatever's going on with a different program called Hitman Pro. So Hitman Pro is very similar to Rogue Killer and some of these other programs, um, but I always like to try different programs because different programs sometimes look for different things. So I'm gonna go to my web browser. I'm gonna type in Hitman Pro, and again, followed by the words Bleeping Computer. Click on the first link there for Bleeping Computer, and then 
download the software and run it. As soon as you start running it, the program is going to automatically update. And then when that is done, you're going to click next. Go ahead and accept the terms and conditions. Go ahead and tell the program that you only want to use it one time. And then you don't have to license it or register or anything like that. And then it's going to start running. So sit back and let's see what it finds. So the Hitman Pro scan finished and there was a lot of tracking cookies and things like that, but there was no actual infections. Now at this point, I have to kind of reevaluate what I've done and potentially what could be the problem. So I'm gonna take a second to kind of evaluate what has happened so far. I've run the check disk utility. I've run the SFC, the system file checker. Both of those indicate that there's no drive issues. I've ran a scan with malware bytes, which I did off camera. I've run a road killer check. I've run a Hitman Pro check. None of these things are showing any major infections. So theoretically, everything should be working properly, but there may be something hidden deep down below that these programs just aren't even looking for. So at this point, I have to assume that there's either an incredibly devious malware that's evading everything, or maybe there's something wrong with Windows. So the next thing that I want to do, since the client is using either McAfee or Webroot, I'm going to use a program called Avast, which has a pretty decent boot scanner. It's a free program. So I'm going to download that. I'm going to schedule a boot scan and then restart and see what happens. Okay, so this is future me talking to past me. I had to interject for a second. Now, in this video, I do install the Avast software to scan for viruses. And in the past, Avast has always been a pretty decent free program. And it still is. It functions very well. However, there have been some things regarding the Avast software that I'm going to no longer be installing it on my client machines or recommending it. I am going to address that in an upcoming video. But for the purpose of this video, which was filmed a while ago, it is safe to install the program and scan for viruses. The boot scan is actually pretty, pretty useful, but there's some privacy concerns that I would just not recommend that you make this your permanent program. Just wanted to put that out there before the video continues and you blow me up in the comments all about how Avast is not trustworthy. I get it. I know it. I'm on it. For the purpose of this problem, you could absolutely do it, but I would probably remove it after you run the scan. The way that this works is if there is some kind of malware or possibly a rootkit virus that is running inside of Windows, and if you remember, when Windows first starts up, the disk usage isn't very high, and then it just goes straight through the roof. So I'm thinking that maybe there's something happening when Windows loads, and the Avast boot scan might be able to remove that outside of the Windows environment. And then at that point, when you restart, the malware or virus or whatever is no longer running, and then maybe that'll take care of it. So that's what we're gonna do. So I've downloaded the Avast program. You can get it for free. There'll be a link in the description for you. When you open it up, you're gonna go into protection and then click on boot time scan and then just click run on next PC startup and then simply restart the computer. Avast is gonna run. It's gonna scan for anything that might be malicious and remove it. So we're gonna run that. We'll see what happens. So the computer's restarted. Uh, Avast found three infections, but none of them were that big of a deal. And I'm going to go back to the task manager and see if anything's changed. And as you can see, it's just steadily climbing right back up until 100% disk usage. So that didn't help the problem any. So as you can imagine, it's starting to get a little frustrating when everything I do doesn't seem to make a difference. Now, there's a couple of other things that I could do prior to just breaking out an installer disk and reinstalling Windows, such as running the dism command. But I haven't had a whole lot of success in the past running that DISM command with an issue specifically like this where it's hard drive usage. And at this point, I've really got two options left to fix the problem. Again, run the Windows installer and just wipe the machine, reinstall Windows clean, and that should take care of it. But this particular machine has got a ton of stuff on it, tons of configuration, tons of software that has to be reinstalled. It would be an absolute nightmare to start over from scratch. So I really want to avoid that if possible. But there is one other utility that I've used on a bunch of machines and it does amazing things and finds problems where even Windows doesn't know there's a problem. And that program is called Tronscript. So before I continue with this, it's important that you know that Tronscript is a very powerful tool, but it should be used as an absolute last resort before just wiping your computer and starting over. One, you wanna make sure you have all the Windows updates done and restarted so they take effect. Two, you wanna make sure you've got everything backed up, include gameplay, anything personal, you wanna make sure that you've got that saved. This is the last resort before wiping Windows. But with that said, I'm almost at that point now. So I'm gonna go ahead and download it and run it. And if that doesn't work, then we'll have to wipe Windows. 
So I'm going to go ahead and open my web browser and I'm going to type in download Tronscript. And what I'm looking for is the link to Major Geeks. That's one of the safe places that the file is hosted. So I want to make sure I download it from there. A lot of people say that this thing is full of viruses and all that. Those are all false positives. There's there's nothing dangerous about this script. It's just that powerful that some antiviruses just freak out over it. When the page loads up, I'm going to just select one of these download at Major Geeks links and then start downloading the software. Now, the software is about a half a gigabyte, so depending on your internet speed, it may take a little while. Just be patient. There's a lot of stuff inside this tool. Okay, so the file is completed, so I'm going to go to the download location. And then I'm just going to simply double click on the file. And what that's going to do is it's going to extract a bunch of files from it into several new folders. And those folders will exist in that same download folder. So I'm going to just simply open the folder. It's important that you read the instructions first because, again, it is a pretty powerful tool. After I do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the transcript file and run as administrator. Now, it should go ahead and download any necessary updates. If it doesn't, that's okay. Now, eventually you'll get the red screen where you have to type in I agree in all caps in order to run this because they don't want you holding them responsible for anything that happens to your computer, nor do I. But after you do that, just go ahead and kick it off and let it go. This process can take anywhere from 3 to 30 hours, but it's pretty amazing. And I fast forwarded here several hours, I haven't even waited for the whole thing to finish, but look at the disk percentage now that Transcript has been running for a while. This tool is absolutely amazing, and what it's kept me from having to do is completely wipe this machine and start over from scratch. Everything opens quickly, it's very responsive, and now as you can see, the hard disk is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's a pretty amazing tool, and this client is now fixed. So I hope you enjoyed watching my process and how I actually work on computers here in my local business. And as you saw in the video, Tronscript is absolutely an amazing tool, and with one click, you could very well fix all the problems on your computer. Now, there are a lot of things about Transcript that could potentially be an issue for you, so you definitely need to read the instructions. And if you'd like to know more about this amazing program, I'll put it right up here for you. I encourage you to watch that video and ask questions before you run it, because again, it is a last resort. So again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.